Hello, uh, welcome to this tutorial on Python. In this tutorial, we will talk about the very basics of Python programming language. And uh, we will be talking about basic data types, variables, uh, and some operations. Okay. Uh, computer programmers we talked about typically takes in some inputs. Uh, in this example, let's say two numbers, five and 10, and performs some processing. Uh, maybe it could add it or multiply it. And of course, the processing can be a lot more complicated. Uh, it can be arithmetic processing. It could be a very involved logical processing, uh, which is oftentimes what we do, you know, when we write programs and it produces an output. So you take in some inputs, perform some processing and produce an output. Okay. And of course, these inputs need not just be numbers and Python works with values, you know, uh, numbers such as 10 and 5.5, of course, and also uh, um, text such as hello, you know. Uh, so this is the last part is called as string data type. The first one, number 10, corresponds to a data type that we call as integers. Probably you're familiar with this from your math class, basic math class. This type of data, 5.5, uh, in the math class, maybe you called it real numbers. Uh, in the computer numbers, computer language, we call it floats, okay? So we start off this basic programming uh, lesson by introducing uh, introducing you to three data types, integers, real numbers, computer language is float, and string data type. Now, of course, for the string data type, I can always, it doesn't have to be just uh, alphabets, it can be any sequence of characters. For example, it can be hello one, hello two, or something longer, okay? As long as it's within a quote mark, the quotation here. It's a sequence of characters, uh, can be special characters, can be alphabets, can be numbers, okay? So let's get started. Uh, when we when we talk about these three data types, um, the very basic way a computer or a program can take in an input is just plain numbers. Uh, in the computer programming language, we call them constants. These are fixed values whose numbers do not change, right? And examples of constants, we just looked at it. 10, 5.5, and hello, okay? So computer takes in an input, could be 10, 5.5, something like that, and it processes it, and these values do not necessarily change, okay? And so 10 is a constant. So let's see what I mean by this, by writing some code, okay? So here, uh, this is the first code cell we start using. I use this hash mark right here, hash. If you put in a hash, everything that follows in that line, the computer program, Python ignores it. I use it, or we use it for writing comments, okay? So for example, I'm basically saying here that I want to print a number. And of course, print is one way to produce an output using Python programming language, okay? So in this simple statement that we wrote, that I write here, print, open bracket, close bracket, 10, 10 is the input, it's a number, it's a constant, it's an integer constant, and I'm asking the Python programming language to produce that as an output. So if you run the program, remember you can do shift enter, or you can press this button here to run it. It simply produces, or it prints 10 as an output. So I took in an input. In this case, we the processing is really minimal. We don't really do much processing, and we produce that as an output. You can always ask Python what data type uh, to, does this number belong to. Okay, so, I, so the command to use for this is type. Type, open bracket, type in the number you want, close bracket, right? And it basically tells you what data type it is. So I'm gonna run this. I press Shift Enter. It tells you it's INT, Python cryptic code for integer. It's an integer data type. Okay. Similarly, if you want to know the type of a number of 5.5, 5.6, doesn't matter, right? It's a float. Okay, I told you it's a float. You want to check it, check to see what Python says. So you would use this command type 5.6, right? Again, remember you need to open bracket, close bracket. Okay. And just I want to introduce a variation here. I take this whole thing here, instead of simply running it, right, like I did here. I can ask it to print, okay? 
Let me run this and I'll just very briefly explain the difference. Okay, I'm pressing shift enter. It's basically giving you a similar answer. I mean, it have, if you had said type 5.6, I'm gonna go back to the previous code here, right? I'm gonna say type 5.6 have told me it's a float okay so instead of saying it's a float because I printed it it's just giving me a slightly different output but essentially the answer is still the same this is a float the interesting thing here to note is that when I did print it's actually telling me that it's a, it, this data type belongs to a class and we talked about objects classes and objects are related concepts and since we are at the very, very beginning of our you know, journey to programming, we won't talk about it yet. Again, please note that for numbers like 10 and 5.6, right, there are no quotation marks. But when you're, whenever you're talking about a string data type, right, a sequence of characters uh, as a data type, you need to enclose them in quotation marks. You can use a single quote or a double quote, okay? And I'm going to ask you to go back to the to the book chapters to, to understand the difference between when you would use single quote and when you would use double quotes, okay? Um, here you have type, but in quotes, hello, okay? So let's run this. So it's basically, this belongs to a class string, str, standing for string, okay? So this these are constants, fixed values that you can use in a program. But again, if we can only use constants, we, the range of things we can do in a program would be very, very limited. So typically, we do not really use these constants that much. What we end up doing is we assign these values, right? Uh, 10, 5.5, and whatnot. We assign these values to something that I like to, that, that we call variables, okay? So we name them. Variable, I'm just gonna move the Jupyter Notebook up, okay? It's simply a name that represents a value that is stored in computer memory, okay? And remember that if you, regardless of whether we use 5, 10, 5.5, or hello, all these values need to be stored in computer memory. Right? If you remember your uh, basics on the architecture of a computer, right? We have the secondary hard disk where the program and data are stored, and you have RAM, right? Which is where the data and program is loaded when you're running the program, right? So here's where the value is going to be stored. Basically, you use a variable you know, to represent the value. So you assign the value to a variable, okay? For example, if I go to the next quote cell, if I say x equal to five, I'm taking that value five, right? And I'm saying that variable references this value, five, okay? So I hope it's clear. So. Having talked about variables, another related concept is an assignment statement. Okay, it's used to create a variable and make it reference data. What do I mean by that? Here's an example, x equal to five. So this is another programming statement. The typical term for this is assignment statement because this statement creates a variable and also assigns a value to it. Okay, again, for those of you who might be familiar with C++, you will note that uh, Python is slightly different. And again, if you don't know C++, don't worry about it. So maybe in C++, you may need to do int x, right? And maybe in some programming languages, you may need to finish your programming statement with a semicolon, right? And then you might say x equal to five. So you'll need two statements in C++, okay? But for Python, I mean, of course, syntax, we don't really use semicolon at the end, right? We just use one statement. And when the, pipe, when, when the program looks at the value, it says, hey, five is an integer, so x must be an integer. So I can do this dynamically. So this is the difference between, I'm gonna write this down here so you understand, okay? This is the difference between dynamic typing, right? I'm gonna say Python and static typing, C++, okay? So in C++, I have to declare the variable ahead of time, and I can't really change the data type. Whereas on Python, I don't have to declare that a variable belongs to an integer. I just assign a value to it, and based on the value that I assign, the programming language infers the data type. So if it's five, hey, x is going to be integer. If it's something else, let's say if it's 10.5, then x is going to be a float, okay? 
So it does it dynamically and hence the name dynamic typing for Python. Okay, and you can't really do that for C++. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to run this. Again, you should know if, it, if before you even run this, think about what you think the output is going to be. Okay, so if I run this, the output is going to be five because I took a value five, created a, created a variable x, assigned five to x, and printed the output. That's it. So we have an input, some processing, and an output. Okay. Now let's come to the next code cell. <clears throat> x equal to five and x equal to world. Okay. And I say print x. Do you think this is a this is a valid uh, piece of programming code? And what do you think the value of x is going to be? Pause the video, take a moment to think about these three lines of code, okay? And see, think, uh, think about whether this is going to be a valid piece of programming code. Okay, so now let me run this code, shift enter, of course. So you see that x takes the value world, okay? And if I actually remove the comment here, right? Because there was a hash mark the code cell ignored the statement, this last line. But if I run this now, there should be two out, two outputs. World, x value of x, and the type of x, which is a string. So you first of all, you note that this program worked, so there's no error on this program. And second, you note that the value of x is world. So what happens if we put, put a print statement here? Print x. Run this. You note that there are three lines of output. So something that you may, I mean, you already know this, but I want to repeat this again. Programs, they execute from the top. So the first line is x equal to five, print x. So it's going to be outputting five. And then we change the value of x, right? Because we are assigning a different value to the variable x. Print x, it's going to print world. And what's the type? Whatever the data type it is last assigned to, right? So it's going to be a string, okay? So this is a valid piece of programming code. The interesting thing to note is that x initially took on the value of five, but as soon as you change the value, right? Now the x is referencing a different uh, value. In this case, a different data type even, okay? And now five is somewhere out there, it's orphaned, right? Nothing is referring, no variable is referring to this value because I basically took away x and now we made it point to a different data value. It's completely orphaned, okay? And periodically what happens is in a programming language, maybe you keep running some code, you know? After a while, they end up removing all these values that have been orphaned in the memory that are not being referred to by any variable. That process is called garbage collection, literally. So these are all values that have been orphaned, not being referenced to anymore, okay? So, so this really is the introduction to you know data types. Again, there are many, many more data types. We're only looking at um, three basic ones at the moment. Uh, we'll talk about more you know in a, in future modules. Let's take a look at this code cell. Uh, two lines of code. Okay. Take a moment to think about this piece of code. You know, pause the video, and I want you to answer two questions. Now, did you think uh, there's going to be an error message? If you ran this program, you probably saw an error message. So let me run this. This basically means the name C is not defined. So if you ended up printing something, right, that's not been defined before, you know, in this cell, or maybe in the previous cells, uh, let's say in this, in this particular notebook, you are going to see an error, okay? So it doesn't understand what C means, so that's an error. So let me remove this. Now, do you think this is going to be all right? Do you think there's going to be an error message? Let's run this again and see. Actually, this is okay. So again, the neat thing about Python is that I can assign multiple values to multiple variables. As long as they match, there's a corresponding value to each of the variables. I can do the assignment in a single statement. That's a cool, cool feature. I don't think you can do this in many other programming languages. Now, now take a look at this particular code cell, temperature equal to 80, print temperature. Do you think this will be all right? Let's see, yes. On the other hand, if I actually had this, do you think this would be okay? Name error, simply because 
for the computer, this variable is different from this variable. Okay, a few more things to go over. Uh, you should know that there are rules for naming variables in Python. Okay, I write this down here, uh, what the rules are. I also give you some examples of good names and bad names. Okay, so you should take a look at this and also take a look at the specific section in the book to ensure that you understand the right ways of naming variables in Python. Okay, um, finally, in the last few minutes, I wanted to introduce you to, you know, uh, some additional programming statements. Before we go, I just wanted to say a few more words about assignment statements, okay? Uh, if you go back up here, I'm just gonna go all the way back here, and I actually make a statement here. Assignment statement is used to create a variable and make it reference data. <clears throat> and I say that general format is a variable equal to expression, x equal to five. Okay, and actually this is one of the simplest ways of writing an expression. What do we mean by an expression? It could be something like x plus one, right? Or it could be something like a multiplied, again, programming language multiplication star, a multiplied by b, you know, multiplying by b, uh, subtracting c, and so on, okay? So it could be an expression, variable is an expression. That's a general, general format, and if the variable refers to an actual value, this is also an expression, but the simplest way of assigning a value to a variable, okay? So it could simply be a constant, right? These are all valid ways of using an expression, okay? So the next step here is for you, the next step for us to take is take a look at a, take a look at an assignment statement, x equal to one, right? It's an expression, simple expression, but I can also say x equal to x plus one. It's an expression again, okay? What do you think? the value of x is going to be after the statement is executed, okay? And think about it before you uh, run the statement. The value is two. So all that happened is that it, the first statement basically says, hey, I create a variable x, assign a value one to x, so x is one. The second statement essentially changes the value of one. So we perform this computation first, okay? So x equal to one plus one, x equal to two. Then we abandon this value, right? So now I make x refer to this expression. So now x is two, print x. x is two and it's printing x, okay? So I can also use more complicated expressions. I won't talk about them yet. What I did do is I assigned specific pages from the book. Then when we come back next week, we'll continue talking from here how to evaluate uh, tricky expressions, expressions like these, okay? Um, so thank you.